One or two axolotls. I really like this plant. Everything is nice and cleaned up. When I first ever saw what an axolotl looked like, I thought it was a Pokemon. 100% my favorite tank I've ever set up. To the channel everyone this past week has been unexpectedly crazy this is all i want to do is youtube everything i want to do is youtube i don't want to do other stuff and unfortunately just everything else just decided to happen last week so i will always try to be on schedule the only reason i would not be on schedule is literally just because of something happening that was out of my control that interfered with me recording it's just been a mess but today i'm gonna go ahead and set up a tank for one or two axolotls that I'm gonna go ahead and rescue in a little bit. I literally have 45 minutes. I gotta get out of here and go pick up the axolotls. They're like almost an hour away. Um, and I have to stop at a Walmart and get an aerator and a bucket before we go. So this is gonna be a two part video. This video is going to be setting up the tank. I'm also gonna give you guys like care information. It seems like every time I do a tank setup video for whatever species or whatever it is, you guys always want a care video. So I'm gonna try and like just like incorporate the two together. So like as I'm setting up the tank or whatever, we're gonna make it interesting, but I'm gonna give you guys all the information you need. And if you want more information, I'll try to leave some links down below to some trustworthy websites. Let's go ahead and um, kind of ran into a little problem. So let me go ahead and throw you back to the footage when I picked up stuff for this tank right now. All right, so first up, we're gonna go ahead and get one of these decoration pieces because axolotls don't really like light. They like to be hidden under stuff. So without talking too much, I think we're gonna go ahead and get this one. This thing right here, normally I only put natural stuff in my aquarium, but I really like how this is laid out. It's all smooth, safe for the axolotl. And also it gives a lot of places for it to rest and crawl through and hide under. So this is like the perfect thing for an axolotl in my opinion. So I think we're gonna go ahead and get this. We're gonna go ahead and pick out a few plants and uh, I'll talk about live plants versus fake plants in a minute. All right, so they obviously have all of these plants to choose from, but we want some that are gonna be kind of sturdy and hold our axolotl. I really like this plant. Um, I've used it before in aquariums and it is very sturdy and um, could definitely hold up an axolotl. So I think we'll definitely get one of these. And then I think we wanna get a larger plant. So I'm thinking this one here, I don't know how sturdy it's gonna be, but the colors are pretty nice. And it's a taller plant, so this one we can kind of like put in the back. Something like that. I don't know. So I think we'll get that. And I'm just going to go ahead and see if there's anything else that we want over here before we leave. And now, back to the fish room. So obviously now I'm in the fish room and I really thought that that would fit in a 10 gallon because what I was originally going to do is get a 10 gallon, a filter with pre-cycled beneficial bacteria. There's stuff going in the tank that had beneficial bacteria on it. Would have been all set, but went and bought this thing like 20 minutes ago and it doesn't fit in the tank. Like it just won't. There's just no way it'll fit in the tank. So I also got some substrate, but it's just, um, it's not going to work. So I kind of had this idea because my 29 gallon is empty. So this thing is a fully cycled tank. It's been running for months now, um, has had fish in it, but everything in this tank is all set. Water parameters are good. I am going to remove the heater and I'm going to go ahead and do a slight water change because the temperature does need to be lower than 78. That is one of the most important things about an axolotl tank is the temperature. So you want it between 60 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. You also don't want a light that is going to produce a lot of heat. And you also don't really want to use light anyway because axolotls don't really like light. And um, we got to clean up the substrate. We got to put the decorations in there, the plants in there. Also, one other thing, I know a lot of you may comment and be like, oh, you shouldn't put an axolotl in a 10 gallon tank. What I was gonna do because they're babies is I was just gonna get one, put it in a 10 gallon tank, and then put it into a 20 gallon tank in like two months. That's the other thing too, is that live versus fake. In terms of axolotl tanks, I mean, live plants are always better, but axolotls do like to rest on things and they will probably uproot the plants, the live plants, and they will probably also crush the live plants and pr probably kill them. So I'm gonna do a mixture of both just because I already have live plants in the tank, but I was gonna do all artificial plants. So yeah, let's just go ahead and start setting this up because I feel like I'm talking way too much. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is just unplug the filter, take out the heater, um, and I'm just gonna unplug the filter for now because I don't know how much water exactly I'm gonna drain. So I don't want it to just like shut off in the middle of me doing the water. So the heater isn't even plugged in actually. So I'll, I'll, I'm gonna test the water and see what the temperature is because it may actually be at the right temperature. All right, so start the time lapse of uh, be siphoning out the water, I guess. All 
All right, so as you guys can see, we cleaned it up pretty nice. There's a few other things I just need to grab, like some Java moss and stuff that's kind of left over. But for the most part, everything is nice and cleaned up. Water is crystal clear, which we love. Let's go ahead right now and get the decorations, the plants in there, and uh, make it look really nice. This right here is kind of going to be like the centerpiece. Now, I checked all of these. These are very tight in here, so the axolotls will not be able to remove them. You want to make sure that they can't because anything smaller than their head they can consume so you definitely don't want that but this is great because there's a lot of caves and places for them to rest everything is smooth nothing's gonna hurt them which is great all right let's do this really carefully i don't want to hit anything all right Whoa, whoa, no, don't fall, don't fall. We don't want you falling, no. That thing looks so good. Oh my god, the camera's not doing it justice. So I'm gonna go ahead, move this around a little bit, make sure it's in the sand pretty well so it doesn't fall or anything. So we don't want the axolotls to like knock it over. That wouldn't be good. We have two live plants now. I'll probably get more in the future. And then like I showed you guys before, we have this little bush right here, which is really sturdy, which is good. And then we have this one right here, so that'll work out pretty nicely. I'm already running a little bit late to go pick up the axolotls, so what I'm gonna do, because they will have to acclimate and I wanna acclimate them fully and properly, 25, 30 minutes. While they're acclimating, I'll go ahead and just put the last few plants in here, top off the aquarium, but also make sure that the water I'm acclimating them with is the same pH and the same temperature as the aquarium water. I'm gonna go, it'll be, you guys won't see the rescue video until Wednesday, so I'm sorry to kind of tease you guys like this, but look, my arm's all wet and everything. We gotta get going right now and, um, Go rescue some axolotls. It's a few hours later. I got the axolotls. Thank God. They're doing great right now. They're acclimating, but I want to take the chance while they're acclimating to go ahead and finish up this tank. This way here, once I put them in, they can just rest and I don't have to like disturb them or anything. I don't have to like move anything in the tank. They can just rest because um, they have been in the bucket for a little bit just from traffic and it just it took a little longer than expected. So let's go ahead and just finish off the tank. So I did go ahead and add that rock. I don't know how good it looks. I don't know. I don't know. I think it looks pretty good actually. Um, it's a nice little hide for them. They can fit in there because they are very small. Here's some more information for you guys. It should be just a species only tank just because they can eat fish and they can get stuck in their gills and it's just it's really bad. So I suggest no fish only axolotls in the tank. Also another thing I want to point out is when they're younger feed them once a day. When they get older feed them every two to three days. Also when they're younger feed them like blood worms brine shrimp, stuff like that. And as they get older, you can feed them like night crawlers. And you can also cut them up once they get into like that in-between juvenile stage. So a lot of you may comment about the substrate. Now, here it is, here is the deal with the substrate. It needs to be extremely fine because they will, they will ingest rocks and gravel. Even if you think it's fine, you want play sand or something like this. Shout out to Life with Axes, contacted them um, and they really helped me out with like picking out a substrate and stuff because I wasn't too sure. Now some people do believe that it is for buoyancy, but I just stay away from it. So I'm going to stay with sand. If I notice that they're ingesting a lot of sand, then I will just remove the substrate altogether. But I do prefer to have a, sub a substrate in my tanks. Oh my god. think 100% my favorite tank I've ever set up I just said that about my beta tank that I set up and I said that about the mini beta tank but this thing pops it's really nice to just walk in the door and that's what you see like it's really colorful the greens are so bright um, even with the live plants and the fake plants I kind of mixed them together so I have a fake and a live fake and a live and then I also stuck a live plant up there kind of blends in nice all together plus we got that little rock hide down there so we've got a bunch of different colors I'm so excited to have set up that tank and I'm so glad that I made the decision to end up using the 29 gallon instead of just trying to figure out a way to put some stuff into a 10 gallon because this thing looks so 
nice. Hope you guys are excited for Wednesday's video. Make sure you guys have post notifications on for that video because it's a great video. These things are so cute and I never thought that I would actually be getting them, but now, I'm, <laughs> now I wish I got them sooner. So real quick before we go, I just want to go over a few hair tips or whatever you guys want to call it. Also, like I said, I will try to remember to leave a link down below to some websites. Hello? Again, they need 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. The pH should be between 6.5 to 8, which I'm kind of lucky because my tap water is hard, is on the more acidic, harder end, um, which they do prefer a little bit more. Axolotls pretty much are extinct in the wild, so I hope that the pair that I got are a male and female, and hopefully once they reach, once they reach sexual maturity, I will have more space, and if they do breed, then we'll have a bunch more to add to the species, to add to all the axolotls in the world. So there won't be an axolotl of them, there'll be an axolotl of them, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, also that, also like I said about the substrate, that is the tank, and also a lot of people do say 20 gallons for the first axolotl, 10 gallons per additional. To keep your water cooler, there are some different things you can do, like not have a lid on your tank. Some of them, very few have been known to jump out, but you can leave the water level a little low. Part of the reason why I did leave it a little low because I don't know yet if I want to keep the top on or not. I think I do. Also, you can put like a fan to blow onto the tank. Also, you can use a sponge filter because it'll have bubbles which will help with evaporation. Also, fun fact, they can regenerate their limbs. They are a fully aquatic salamander. This whole time, I didn't know what they were up until like I started researching them the last like week. Um, I didn't know what they actually were, but they're salamanders. When I first ever saw what an axolotl looked like, I thought it was a Pokemon. <laughs> not gonna lie. They can actually transform into being a land or semi-aquatic salamander. I can't remember which of the two it is, but you, that's not a good thing. Do not try and force your axolotl to turn into a land axolotl. It will shorten their lifespan drastically because they can be known to live up to 10 years and they could live for only a few months, maybe in a few weeks or a few days if they do transform into an, a land axolotl. But yeah, I hope I didn't leave anything out. If I did, everything will be down in the description, hopefully, if I remember to put the websites. But that is it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed, um, and I hope you guys are as excited for Wednesday's video as I am to go ahead and release it, the rescue mission of these axolotls. They're absolutely adorable. But yeah, that'll be it for this video, guys. Make sure you guys comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of this tank. Leave a like for me, hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications, so you get notified when I upload on Wednesday. And other than that, I will see you guys in the next video on Wednesday when I rescue them, which I already have them right next to me, and they're so cute. But yeah, stay tuned. <laughs>